Hello, and welcome back to Hemophyte Breakdowns. Today, I'm going to be talking about stances again, so get ready for a boring one. But I want to talk about stances because it's a long-standing theory in the Hema community that right leg forward or dominant leg forward is an ahistorical abomination, and dominant leg back is good old-fashioned German wholesomeness. And the problem with this theory is that well, it sort of flies in the face of a lot of things that people in modern HEMA competitions do. But I want to kind of break down the reason why they do them and why specifically I am working on pushing my right leg back and the sorts of benefits and pros and cons that I've found in making this change. So we're going to review this little fight I had in a driveway because it's the only footage I have of me making this change recently. But more importantly, we're going to talk a little bit about why I think this change has been beneficial. So to get into this a little bit, first thing I want to talk about is the differences between a full step and a short step or a half step, whatever you maybe call it. Now, the idea here is that in principle, the only difference between these two kinds of steps is which leg is forward and which leg ends up being forward at the end. A full step is any time your leg goes from being behind you to being in front of you at the end of the step. And a short step or a half step is any time the same leg that was forward ends up still being at the front when the step is over. And to this, you might say, well, there's no functional difference between a short step or shuffle step or, you know, a half step, whatever you call it, and a lunge, and you're right, because a lunge is essentially a half step, short step, whatever, shuffle step, where you just fully commit with your forward leg and just let the back one drag behind you or maybe pull out after a while. And the reason this is so popular in HEMA is because of two distinct reasons. One, it is possible to lunge really, really deep and get a whole lot of distance and a whole lot of travel out of that. And most importantly, you do so without much of a tell. One of the problems of the full step is that when you drag your back leg from behind you to in front of you, you spend roughly half of that step moving your back leg to the middle of its travel point, and you haven't actually really gone forward yet. And the problem with that is that it's a tell. It's a massive tell to your opponent that you are going to be attacking because you're probably moving forward. And you basically get half of a step to make your decision to attack them during their preparation to do whatever it is you have to do. But if we watch this first clip, one of the advantages that people don't necessarily take advantage of a lot with the full step is that that tell can also be a feint. And most importantly, that there is absolutely no reason that you should be doing your attack or your technique in the middle of your step. You should be doing it at the beginning of your step, thus taking away the tell. As you see here from this clip, I basically go up in a little bit of a flourish to try to bait my opponent into throwing something back at me, and halfway through my step, when I see that they don't really do anything of substance, I throw a cut straight down under their head, at which point they attempt to stab me on the low line, but my arms kind of get in the way and they don't get a really good grip. But the point here is that I'm using every part of my full step to augment and accentuate the thing that I'm trying to do. If I had done this technique with a lunge, one, it was very likely that I wouldn't have been able to actually reach my opponent's head as my opponent here is really good at leaning out of the way. But most importantly, two, that there wouldn't have been multiple steps in my step or in my lunge to take advantage of this kind of feint. If I had done the same kind of thing where I kind of just gestured my hands into the air and waited for, to see what my opponent was going to do, chances are my lunge would have already ended, landed at its furthest extent, and I would have thrown the follow-up cut to the head at the exact same range that I had done the flourish, meaning that my opponent's lean and backwards motion would have taken him out of range and made it completely fake and made it, you know, miss. So for our next clip, we have a classic shield how to the face. And the reason I want to point this out is because the shield how benefits very, very, very heavily from a full step. And there's a couple reasons why. One, again, is the same thing that I talked about before, where you have that little phase where your back foot hasn't quite reached the middle of its travel yet, at which point you should have already thrown your shield how. But the follow-up parts, everything that comes after that meetup, basically allows you to drive the shield how forward, far more forward than you could with a lunge, and it allows you to close the distance and to continue to walk your thrust in, just making sure that it lands. But there's another advantage that I don't think people talk about much, and that is a level change. One thing that is very clear, especially when you watch uh, fencers from Eastern Europe, is that their lunges are very, very deep. And the thing about deep lunges is that it changes the line of your body, not horizontally, as in closer to your opponent, but vertically, as in further down towards the ground. 
The reason this is important is that if you've watched this channel before, you know I talk about this all the time. All techniques of sword fighting come from the shoulder. That is the vertical line that you're always working with and it determines your maximum reach. However, if you move your body up and down, you're not changing your reach, but you are changing which target becomes closest to you. If you go into a deep lunge, you lower your shoulder line to about probably the level of the midsection or the belly if you get really deep. And what that means is that your closest target is no longer the head or the shoulders, but the hands. And the key thing is that in a lot of right leg forward, dominant leg forward fencing, you see a lot of hand shots or even leg shots. And the reason for that is because when you lunge very deeply, you change your level, you change your closest target from the head to something that many tournaments call a lower priority target. Now, if you do the passing step, as you see from this clip, your shoulders stay at the same level, which means given my, myself and my opponent are both equally tall, we stay at the point where my shield how can now go from my shoulder just a little bit higher than my opponent's shoulder towards his head and not lose a whole lot of range. If I had lunged deeply, even if I had somehow managed to lunge so deep that I had you know, made up for the horizontal difference, I would have made such a change in the vertical that I would have had to throw that shield how at my opponent's chest or belly in order to get my maximum reach, which means if I went for their head, I would have come up very short. And if I had gone for the chest, I probably wouldn't have been able to protect my head nearly as well, which is why a lot of people you don't see using shield how so much, or at least not the vertical edge down shield how that I'm using here. For our next clip, we have another shield hell, only it's my patented flat shield hell. Though, uh, again, we have the previous two things contributing to the success of this technique. We have the fact that I'm able to wait for my opponent to kind of show me that they're going to be going backwards with their footwork, at which point I use the intermediary period from when my back foot leaves the ground to when it meets up with my left leg to basically gauge what's going on and then decide to throw the shield hell. At which point my finished passing step where my right leg goes all the way forward allows me to close that distance and continue to drive the point forward, which forces my opponent backwards to a very uncomfortable position where he does hit me on the hands, but, you know, it's not great. It's not a great trade. But there's a third thing at work here, and that is what you're doing with the left leg when you are going to set up such a technique. Now, a lot of people will tell you, again, that this is a massive tell, and it is. But if you know how to use your tells, and you know how to utilize footwork to make your opponent do something that you want them to do, a left foot footwork tell, or a non-dominant foot footwork tell, can basically train your opponent to either move forward or backwards on your command. Here's what I mean. If you watch this exchange, my opponent is putting pressure on me, and I'm basically keeping my feet perfectly still, leaning backwards a little bit, essentially inviting him to attack me while keeping my feet in the same position, so that if he does throw the attack and I manage to parry it, we'll be pretty close to each other and I'll be able to follow up. But what I do instead is that after my opponent starts to back up, I move my left leg forward a little bit, and when I see this happen, I notice in my opponent that upon seeing my left foot move forward, he starts to move further away from me. And what that tells me is that he is trying to do something similar to what I just did. He is going to be moving backwards and he wants to make sure that he is going to be out of range of whatever technique I throw. However, because this was a footwork with the left foot, all I have actually done is threatened that I'm going to move while simultaneously increased the amount of distance that I can travel. Now, if you know anything about stepping, you know that the furthest you can travel is always determined by your back foot not your front foot because at a certain point no matter how far forward you can go with your front foot you have to start dragging your back leg with you now one of the advantages of a passing step is that if i start off my passing step with a short step on my non-dominant leg i am thereby increasing even if it's by a few inches the amount of distance that i can travel with that step in the full step that's going to come afterwards think of it like you're moving the starting line forward in a race, and then I'm getting a really good push off of the starting block. It's a combination where I can not only step really, really far with a passing step further than I can with a lunge, but I can set it up with a shuffle step first that allows me to go even further, which is what, again, allows me to close and follow up that distance to make sure that 
my threat of a thrust to the chest was something that had to be dealt with. And my opponent, who made the decision to try to void out of range and hit me in the hands, was unable to void far enough to make that thrust not threatening. So for our next clip, we have another flat shield hell, and there's nothing really different about it from the last one, except that it's a good demonstration of a level change being problematic from the perspective of my opponent and not just myself. As I mentioned before, if you go into a deep lunge or you sink your hips, you change the level of your shoulders, which means you change your targeting. But it also changes what can be targeted. I am throwing a flat shield how again with my passing step, which means my opponent is trying to lower their center and basically get their shoulder line down so they can drop their head at the exact same time as they push their hands up high. And normally this is a really smart thing to do because it allows you to move the target away from what's trying to hit it while you move the blocking apparatus, your sword, into the path. And because you're moving them in two opposite directions, you're essentially blocking twice as fast little, you know, Hema trick. However, in this particular case, it does not end up working. And the reason it doesn't end up working is because when he dips his shoulder level lower, what he is accidentally doing is putting his better target into the path of my weapon. And the reason it's working for me is because my shoulder level stayed at the same area. So just like before, where having my shoulder level high allows me to better target the head, if my opponent or your opponent sinks their level low, they are in a lot of ways exposing high priority targets that normally wouldn't be exposed. If my opponent had chose simply to keep their line at the exact same level, it's entirely possible that his cross guard would have ended up hitting my sword a little bit sooner, which meant that it still would have had the same amount of deflection because I'm not supposing that he would have been able to parry faster, but it would have made it so that that little bit of displacement his sword gave to mine would have been able to skip it off of the top of the line rather than drive it into his head. And that's what happens here. So if you're ever looking for a reason to throw shield house, putting your back leg backwards is a really great way to accentuate that. Now, for our next exchange, we have one where I actually lose, but that doesn't mean it's an exchange where I'm demonstrating a failure of right leg full stepping. In this particular case, uh, what you see in this exchange is I throw my flat shield how again, my opponent does a really great job of doing a short edge deflection, getting my point out of the way and being safe, at which point he brings his non-dominant hand over the top of both of mine and pommels me in the head. But one thing I want to point out here is that there's another hidden advantage of taking full steps with your back leg, and that is it allows you to do subtle amounts of offline footwork. I know I have talked shit on offline footwork before, mostly because I think people expect it to be done in the outside rather than while closing in, but in this particular case, the offline footwork served me very poorly in that it set up the grapple for my opponent, but it's something that can be very beneficial if it's the kind of thing that you like to do, especially if you have a really strong mid-range Zverkal game. Now, when I say offline footwork, if you watch this clip, what happens here specifically is that we line up with our left foot and my opponent's right foot more or less in the same line. But after I take my full step with my right leg, notice where my right leg lands. It lands on the outside of my opponent's right leg, meaning that I have effectively, uh, effectively crossed the line from my right side past my opponent's own right side. Now, if you're doing something like a shield how or a zorn how or a zorn or whatever, this kind of footwork where you're crossing the line with your dominant leg is very, very nice because it accentuates the sort of uh, horizontal movement that your defense offers so that you're more likely to close off a line and hit without necessarily getting hit. Add to that the fact that the passing step has more range and more reach you're basically cutting out the negatives of offline footwork, the fact that you're not moving in a straight line and thus are not getting your maximal distance and allowing yourself to use the extra reach to kind of compensate for that. So the idea here is that if you're going to th throw passing steps, think about putting them offline, either to the right or to the left of your opponent and using the positions that you end up in to accentuate some kind of mid-range or grapple game that you're trying to go for. Crossing the line in this particular case didn't help with my grapple game, but if I had crossed onto that line and maybe thrown a right Zverk low to the body, I probably would have been able to walk past my opponent using principles of overrunning to keep myself safe after I had done so. Of course, if I had lunged straight in, not only would I have been had a hard time throwing a follow-up step, 
but chances are I would have had to go straight into them, which would have resulted in a grapple, which I may not want, given that my opponent did a really good job of pommeling me in the head. So that's all I really have to say about the passing step. Uh, if you want to see more information on this, you can watch friend of the channel Stephen Cheney's videos on the anatomy of the passing step, which are really, really good. But if you also want to see me do this, I'm going to be going to AGO this weekend and trying out this right leg back stance the entire time. So hopefully that ends up working out for me. And if you're watching this and you're going to fight me at AGO, well, now you know what I'm going to be doing. So see you maybe next time, probably not this Thursday because of the tournament. And I hope to see you back.